Good morning, WCYE. Good morning. Morning, morning. We're going to pray and then we'll get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you, Lord, that this is the day that you have made and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. We declare that today your word will go forth with clarity, with simplicity, and understanding, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you will speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind. Let me say only what you would have me to say and let it penetrate the hearts and minds of every person here and watching. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, Y'all give it up for the praise team. I was in the back. They did a great job. Great job, girls. Where they at? They must still be in the back. Um, anyhow, today we are going to be continuing on um, in the series um, that we're in. Last week, of course, Pastor Anthony talked about offense. And this week, I want to talk about how people who are easily, not easily offended, I don't want to say easily offended, people who are in their emotions or very emotional tend to show you that there is a word deficit or there's a word shortage. You're like, uh, I know a lot of emotional people, uh, nine times out of 10, they don't have any word in their heart. Um, and so we're gonna talk about why that's so important. So I'm not gonna be long. Y'all know I like to show you every time cause I don't be lying. I don't be lying, Dee Dee, I don't. Literally, this is what I have. I have this, this page, and I have this. That's all, that's all my notes. I can literally, hey, my kids, kids, I miss you. I could literally read this in five minutes, okay? This is all I have, guys. Whatever I say outside of me just reading these is because somebody in here is pulling on me. And the Holy Spirit is gonna, he's gonna say whatever needs to be said. That's God's honest truth. So, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get through these notes. If I take any detours, don't be mad at me, okay? Just be like, Lord, who, who need that, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. Welcome, if you're joining us live, welcome, welcome. Um, Pastor Anthony is not here today. His birthday is tomorrow, and so he's chilling. So, you know, today he took a little breaky break, and uh, I'm gonna hold it down. So let's go ahead and get into this word, guys. So. Point one, I have three of them, by the way. Point one, someone who's easily irritated or overly sensitive, highly emotional, nine times out of 10, it's a word shortage. Why does a word shortage have you in your feelings? Can anybody tell me why someone who don't have the word would be in their feelings? What you think? Then let me know. What are you thinking? Why would somebody emotional, why would that be a word shortage? Why? You say, I don't have a clue. Big question mark? Big question mark? What you think? Yes. They don't know how to deal with their emotions. Is that? Hey, baby, good to see you. Billings, is that you? Okay. What you think, Billings? I was gonna say the same thing he said, it's because they don't have enough word to calm their feelings or process their emotions. Great job, great job. So the word anchors us, okay? It, it anchors our soul. What is our soul? Our mind, thinker, chooser, feeler, right? It anchors us so that we're not focused on what's going on around us so much, but we're mo more focused on what the word promises. Case in point, if you have a situation, you have a challenge that you're going through, I hear somebody rubbing on the mic. Um, if you have a challenge that you're um, dealing with or you're going through, naturally, you would be responding to whatever's going on. So if somebody hurt my feelings, naturally, I'm gonna be in my hurt feelings. How the word anchors that is the word will then 
kind of curve whatever your thought process is or whatever your feelings are so your feelings aren't taking over because a lot of times if you feel feeling hurt the hurt likes to go on a rampage right the hurt will turn into anger the anger can turn into rage rage can turn into uh, I don't know revenge anything it, it starts to evolve and morph into bigger things. But what the word does is it, it takes that human emotion and then it anchors it, it pulls it down so it can be grounded and not take you all over the place on this emotional trip. So when you have the word to be able to anchor your thoughts, then when you feel those emotional feelings, you then remind yourself, your spirit will then pull up that word and it reminds you of not what's going on around you or what you're experiencing, but it anchors you to whatever God promised, all right? And we know that the word of God is the truth, it is the promise, and it supersedes anything that we experience here in this world. What does that mean? If I'm experiencing a lack of something, if I'm experiencing unhappiness, if I'm experiencing depression, if I'm experiencing anything outside of God's goodness, then we need to then kick into, God, what did you promise me? The Bible says that he's going to supply every one of our needs, wants, and desires according to his riches and glory. The Bible says that we are never alone, that he never leaves us. He promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So what does that mean? If I'm in need of something, then I need to be reminding God and myself, God, you say you will supply every one of my needs. Whatever your need is, you put that need before the Lord. Lord, I thank you that I need this scholarship money for school. You know what I'm saying? Because my parents don't have the money to send me to college. Father, you say you will supply every one of my needs. So I thank you, Lord, for the scholarship money in order for me to get to school and not be struggling. Thank you, Lord, for that. If I'm depressed, Father, you said um, I feel alone. You said you would never leave me. So I thank you, Lord, that I feel the comfort of your presence when I feel um, in these moments where I feel alone. I thank you, Lord, that you will comfort me and you will f uh, fill me up with your presence so I don't feel alone because you promised me that. So when you're having these experiences, which we will, but when you're having these experiences, it's the word of God that will anchor you to bring those human emotions and uh, the responses to our human experience back in line to the promise of God. Because the promise of God supersedes what we're experiencing in this world. Does that make sense? It supersedes, which means whatever you're experiencing, if it's not the goodness of God, you're still going through. So you are to expect the goodness of God until it manifests in your life. Does that make sense? And you hold on to it until it comes to pass. Now the challenge is, as you're going through life, different things will happen, different situations, circumstances will occur where you feel like, OMG, this is for the birds right? Or this is overwhelming. This is stressful. Uh, is there really a God because I can't believe I'm dealing with this? Anybody ever felt like that? My hand is raised. I'm not just doing that as an example. I have felt like that. Oh my goodness, this is so overwhelming. I can't believe it. God, where are you? That is a part of the human experience. The Bible doesn't tell us that we're not going to experience challenges. It doesn't even promise us that we're not going to experience issues. It says, in this world, you will experience tribulation, trouble, trials, challenges. It says, yes, you will experience that, but be of good cheer. Why are you being of good cheer? If I'm going through something, if I'm feeling some type of way and things aren't happy, why would I be of good cheer? Why would I do that? The Bible says, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. So that's how the word anchors you, because the word is going to remind you of what God's promise is. So yes, you will experience tribulation, son. Yes, you will experience tribulation, daughter. But be of good cheer. Stay focused. Do not allow it to overwhelm you, for I have overcome, which means the victory has already been won. Just stay the course. Somebody say, stay the course. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to you? I'm still in Pastor Anthony's thing. If that makes sense, clap for me one time. All right, so that's point one. When you see somebody who's, who's, who's all in their feelings, and I'm talking all the time, you just emotional. Every time I turn around, child, you wearing me out, you so emotional. That is a, a case, you know what? You need some word. Because you're not being anchored in the promises of God. You're so moved by life, 
You don't have any word to anchor you and bring your emotions and your feelings into subjection or in line with God's promises. My point two, all right, y'all, I'm on point two. I only got three. As believers, we should desire to grow in grace. As believers, we should desire to grow in grace. We should desire for our relationship with Christ to evolve. We should desire for our relationship with God to mature. Not to be like we were in children's church just yesterday and we said the, the prayer. I am a C-H. I am, no, I am a C. I am a C-H. I am a C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. And I have. Don't be trying to act like y'all ain't been in super church in a long time. You know you know that song. Y'all don't know the song. I am a C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. And I have C-H-R-I-S-T-M-I-H-E-A-R-T. And I will L-O-V-E-E-T-E-R-N-A-L-L-Y. Who know what I just spelled? We should want, we should want to evolve in our relationship with God. As young believers even, we call you the now generation because we believe that you guys are able to speak the word of God, declare the word of God, and then see the word of God manifest in your life. The Bible says we should be able to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. You should be able to do that now at 15, 16, 17, 18. You should be able to declare a thing and it be so. You see it because of your faith. You see the manifestation of it quickly. Not, oh, um, I just, you know, when I get you and Pastor Anthony's age, I guess that's when it'll happen. No. Your relationship with Christ should evolve to a point where you're able to see the goodness of God and the manifestation of his power in your life now as we speak. All right? Let's go to um, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. As we, when we first become born again, yes, we are just, we're just understanding what happened. Some of us probably did it you know, because we was in church and it was just a really cool moment and that seemed like the thing to do at the time. Yes, let's say the um, sinner's prayer and be born again. That may have been how it started, but as you evolve, you should begin to evolve in understanding who you are in Christ. Second Corinthians, uh, what did I say? Second Corinthians 5 and 21, for God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. So as we're evolving in our relationship with God, this is what we're coming to the understanding of. That our relationship with Christ is that we have a savior who was made sin on our behalf so that when we accept him, we are then made right so that when God sees us, he sees us as you all good with me? Because when I see you, all I see is my son. All I see is redeemed. All I see is delivered. All I see is healed. All I see is set free. All I see is Jesus. And that's what we evolve in. So that as we're walking out this journey of life, when we're talking about different things are happening in our lives, and when we feel these different emotions and these different challenges and things like that, a lot of times the enemy will try to convince us and, and um, he, will, he will try to play with our minds to thinking that when we make mistakes and when we do things outside of the will of God for our lives, that we become that thing. Oh, you messed up, so you are that. Oh, you did that, so you are bad. You are this. No, you are righteous. You are righteous because Jesus makes us righteous. And when we begin to really absorb that and really take in that, man, I'm, I'm right with God. No matter what, I'm right with God. Because I received Jesus. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, and because of it, he made me right. So no matter what happens, I'm, I'm right with God. When you start to really believe that thing, then you start to move different. 
Because when you understand who you are, the enemy can't really, he can't, he can't offset you with all of these thoughts of, you know, oh, woe is me about this, and oh man, life is just so hard. No, I'm right with God. And because I'm right with God, I have a right to everything he says I have a right to. Now, in order to know what you have a right to, what you gotta do? You got to read that B-I-B-L-E, my guy. You got to read it. In order to know and understand what you have a right to, going back to point one, in order for you to bring your emotions under control, you got to know what you have a right to. So whatever your emotion is trying to lead you to believe and lead you to feel, you got to know what is the counterpart to that emotion I'm feeling? What is this emotion trying to lead me to believe that's outside of the goodness of God? I've got to know that. Because if I don't know that, then there's nothing to anchor me and to bring me in line with God's promise. If I feel like I'm depressed and I have nothing else to live for, what, if I don't know that God promised me life and life more abundantly, why would I be thinking about that that he said that he has plans for me. He knows the very plan that he has for me. He planned it from the very foundations of this earth. That's why I'm here. I am here for a purpose. I am here because from the very foundations, before I was even formed into my mother's womb, before I was even assigned to the parents that I have, before I was assigned to uh, be in the hospital that I was delivered in, before that even, God already had a plan for my life. If I don't know that to be true, then when I feel depressed and I feel like I have nothing to live for and I'm t uh, thinking about suicide, then sure those thoughts can take over because I don't understand the goodness of God and the truth of God's word that says from the very foundations of the earth, I had a plan for you, plans to do you good and to bring you to an expected end. That's his promise for us. So when life throws you these little uh, sidebars, that be feeling like, man, but Miss Constance, you don't understand, man. You don't understand my parent, my parents or my parent. You don't understand. I stay with my grandma. My parents didn't even want. There's so many different things that try to deter you from the one thing. God, I believe that no matter what, from the very foundations of the earth, you had a plan for me, plans to do me good, to bring me to an expected end. That's what you have for me. Every single last one of you, don't ever let this life experience convince you to think, to think anything other than, God, you have a plan for me. That is his, that is the truth. I have a plan. God has a plan for me. I'm supposed to be here. Does that make sense? Let's keep going. As we grow in our relationship with Christ, we should develop in the fruit of the Spirit as well. Understand this. Development is a byproduct of your relationship with God. So I'm talking about developing and growing with Christ. Development is a byproduct of your relationship. What does that mean, Ms. Constance? It's inevitable. The closer I get to God, the development will happen. That's why you hear us say, it's not about the sin. It's not, God, don't, he's saying, come as you are. He's saying, hey, you, I, I'm not waiting for you to come to church and to start talking to me and trying to build a relationship with me when you get right. Because without me, you can't get right. The closer I get to God, the more I begin to reflect God. Say that with me. The closer I get to God, the more I look like God. Think about it. Who's had a friend for maybe friends that they are really, really tight with a best friend or maybe a, a cousin that's like a sibling for like a friend for a more than like five, six years. Like long time childhood friend type friends. You know, people you've known since elementary school, right? Y'all ever been around them and y'all like start talking alike and y'all start acting alike and doing stuff alike? And it's like sometimes you ain't even gotta say nothing, you just do a look and you like, Ooh! 
Like y'all know what to do as soon as you lock eyes? No? Y'all don't, don't? Okay, 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 okay. It's like, you feel me. Some things don't even have to be said. It's just already understood. Why? Because we like this. That's my, that's my guy. That's my, that's my sis. No matter where we at, I already know what it is with her. No matter what's going on, when I'm feeling some type of way, I already know. If my guy know, he gonna hit me up. Yep, because I already know how he is. And he know how I am. And he gonna call and check up on me. Cause that's how we do. My favorite cousin, yep. We like siblings cause we be so tight. We like talk all the time. People say we look alike, you know, it's just, we like this. How was that? Cause you spend time with that person. You spend time with them. And then y'all start to act alike because the more you spend time with a person, y'all start to connect in a way, and y'all behavior start to kind of bleed over into each other, and then y'all be talking alike. And you know what I'm saying? I have a sister. I'm the baby of my family. But I have my, um, let's see, my older brother who's right in front of me, and then my older sister who's in front of him. And um, when we were younger, my mom used to make her take me everywhere. Cause I was the baby sister and I have like two, I have three older siblings over her, um, but she was the closest to me. So my mom would say, everywhere you go, Nikki, take Constance. And she'd be like, ma, dang, why I gotta take her, the little sister. I'm like, yay, I get to go with the big kids. Gosh, ma, why? Girl, take your sister with you. So I get to hang out with the big kids and I'm just watching. Big kids talk, big kids talk. I ain't got no business in. Big kids doing what big kids do. Then I got older and now I'm a teenager hanging out with like, they on the brink of graduation. So I'm a young teenager, like ninth grade. And these are like seniors. They like big people talk. And I'm just taking it all in and I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, all right. The older I got, the more I started to see me hanging around my sister, just seeing her in different atmospheres and different dynamics and things like that. Now I start to act like my sister. It just happens, just, I might laugh and the kids will be like, oh my God, mom, you sound like Auntie Nikki. And I'm like, really? And now I'm starting to hear it. I'm like, oh my God, I sound like my sister. Oh my God, I look like my sister. Y'all say, well, y'all are the same, y'all the same blood. Exactly. The moment you became born again, you and Jesus were like this. We are born again through and by the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus that cleanses us, that makes us right. So what does that mean? The more time we spend understanding this blood that made us righteous, the more time we spend spending about our Savior and how he made us, um, he delivered us from sin and how the word promises all, uh, all of these things to us, the more time we spend in it, understanding it and involving him, the more we will begin to reflect and look like him. And then be like, man, what's going on with you? So there's something about you. That's what it'll start. There's something about him, something about her. It is, they different. But that difference is, I am reflecting my father. I am a child of God. I don't move the same. I don't act the same. My response to people ain't the same. Why? Because I reflect my father, my heavenly father. When I was in high school, I remember, um, first of all, I, 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 never, I never really did well with peer pressure, right? Peer pressure just wasn't a thing for me. My dad did a great job of helping me understand that if you don't want to do it, just don't do it, right? 
But as I was going through high school, I liked to try different things because I just wanted to see. You know, my parents got me in church every day of the week. All we do is church, choir rehearsal, Bible study, Sunday school. It's like, oh my gosh. But when I go to school, people act like they look like they're really having fun out here, like cussing and stuff. Like, this look fun. And they be doing it with such emphasis. Like, it just, they put a good spin on it, and it just sounds really good when it comes out of their mouth. It's like, man, I like the way you put that combination together. Like, man, that was good. How did you just think of that? Somebody say something smart, and oh, boy, and they just go off on this tangent. I'm like, man, that sounded that sounded kind of nice. Here I go. Somebody say something to me, and I go try to say, put together this combination of words, and they like, mm-mm. Nah, that, that, that don't even sound right coming out your mouth. I'm like, why? I said, like, I was taken from what you said the other day. Nah. They was like, yeah, you, you really sound, you sound lame. I was like, oh my God, how dare you? But then I started to realize it's because I'm trying to be somebody I'm not. I'm trying to allow myself, I'm trying to make myself reflect someone I'm not a part of. I'm trying to connect myself and reflect something that's not in me. Because who I am, what I've spent time with, is Christ. Who I am, what's inside of me is God's goodness, love, forgiveness, encouragement. That's what's inside of me. So at the moment that I decided that, you know what, I'm not going to try and be like everybody else that's around me, I'm really cool being me. I'm really cool just doing what I do and letting that be what you get when you see me. The moment I decided to embrace that, things change. Why? To this day, if I see anybody from high school, because I graduated in the 2000s, so don't try me like I'm super old and I graduated like a long, long time ago, it was like in the 2000s. Early 2000s, but that's besides the point. But anytime I see somebody from when I went to high school, they'll be like, I have one girl, she'll say, Hey, high school role model. And I'm thinking, why was I your high school role model? She was like, because you was like a pretty girl, and you was cool, and you, you ain't take no mess, and you just stood your ground, and it just was what it was. And I was like, yeah, that was me. That's what I did in high school. I ain't play no games. I ain't play no mess. I was not allowing nobody to call me outside of my name. I don't play that. But at the same time, when I heard from God, I wasn't afraid to speak. Legit. I tell this story about when there was this young girl. She was like a, she kind of had special needs. Um, and she was a little autistic, but people used to make fun of her. And I remember this one day she was in the bathroom. We were changing classes. And one day she was in the bathroom. I heard her in the stall crying. And um, I knew it was her. Um, because I had saw her going into the bathroom before I went in. So when I went into the bathroom and I heard her crying, I'm like, oh, God, like, I feel weird. Like, would it be weird if I just walked back out of the bathroom because I don't want to deal with her crying? But I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. Tell her I love her, and I heard her. It's like, what? He was like, tell her. So I used the bathroom, and I went and washed my hands in the sink, and... I'm stalling at this point, like, oh my gosh. Like, what is she gonna think? Cause she's already, you know, a little different. So what is she gonna think if I tell her this? Holy Spirit said, say it. So she's over there and she's trying to get herself together. She done calmed down from crying. You know that when you at the end of your cry. That one. And I said, God told me to tell you he loves you and he heard you. She starts crying again. I'm like, oh my gosh, what in the world? I done messed, I done hurt the girl feelings. And she looked at me and she said, thank you. 
She said, thank you. That was as simple as it was. It wasn't nothing deep. I didn't lay hands on her or nothing. But out of my obedience in doing what God asked me to do, I don't know what that meant for her. I don't know what she said, what she had prayed to God. I don't know. All I know is in that moment, she was so grateful it brought her to tears. When I simply said, God said he loved you and he heard you. What is that? That's me being able to embrace who God has created me to be. That's me being able to reflect the, the love of God no matter where I am. Because I had spent time with God, because I was able to embrace the right standing I, I was, uh, that I'm in, in Christ, that means when he speaks to me, I'm willing to obey. I'm willing to do what needs to be done. And in that moment, I reflected God's love and goodness for her. I was an expression of God's love, like we should be. I was an expression of God's love to that young lady that day. And I never know the ends of why she needed to hear that or what happened as a result, but I left feeling at peace that I was able to hear God's voice and I was able to obey God's voice. Why? Because I was able to embrace who God has called me to be, all that God has called me to be. I was able to hear what he said and I was able to do it unashamed. I was a little leery at first, but I'm like, Lord, I trust you. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? If I'm wrong, she'll just be like, what? I say, God loves you and he heard you. That's... This is the time, guys. This is the time where young people need to really embrace. You need to really embrace your relationship with God. Stop making it just something you do on a Sunday so you can say you did it or because your parents made you come over to teen ministry. You are the now generation, the now generation that is going to change the world. How are you going to change the world? By embracing who you have been called to be. Understand you've been called to be different. It's okay if you're not like your friends. That don't mean you ain't going to have no friends. You're just a different one. You're just the one they can come to when they want to talk things out and really, you know, think soberly. You know, but it's time out for us trying to just blend in and do what everybody else is doing and be like everybody else is being. It's time out for that. Let's start to embrace who God has called us to be and do what God has called us to do. Yes, you will make mistakes along the way. Yes, you will kind of, you know, mess up or whatever. That's what grace is for. That's what his forgiveness is for. And that's why we have to understand that, Lord, I thank you that you love me so much that you knew that I was going to mess up even before I mess up. That's why you covered all my mess ups so that I don't have to focus on my mess up. I don't have to focus on the fact that I messed up because you already covered it in advance because he said, I want your focus to be me. Because I know that if you focus on me, you're going to begin to reflect me. The development is a byproduct. If I can get you not to focus on your mess up, if I can get you not to focus that you smoked that, if I can get you to focus on the fact that, oh, okay, you had sex and you wasn't supposed to, if I can get you to focus on, yes, you lied to your parents and you shouldn't have, if I can get you not to focus on that and to focus on the fact that I'm with you, you're with me, keep it here. Let's stay here. Keep it here. Keep your eyes on me. Because yes, I know you're gonna mess up, but I don't want your mess up to be your focus. I wanna be your focus. I don't want your slip up to be your focus. I don't want your, Lord, I missed it. I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Oh, you know what? Holy Spirit told me to do it and I did the other. I don't want you to focus on that part. I want you to focus on me. Because if I can get you to focus on me, then you'll begin to reflect me. And the development of you focusing on me is inevitable. Y'all hear all of these stories of Pastor Anthony and how he was a hellion, and I mean a hellion. But you would never know that. You could not even imagine the things that Pastor Anthony has said he has done. You can't imagine it. It feels like a fairy tale. Why? Because the person that stands before you is a person that has been completely transformed and the transformation came the day he decided, you know what, God? I'm not gonna focus on what's going on. I'm not gonna focus on the fact that my dad was a, 
uh, locked up before I was born. I'm not going to focus on the fact that I'm in a city that um, is away from my family and I feel like I'm all alone. I'm not going to focus on the fact that I've done so many bad things trying to prove to these people that I might be little, but I ain't the one to play with. I'm not going to focus on all of those things that I've did. As an adult, is when it hit him. You know what? I need to focus on Jesus. I need to focus on Jesus. And when he decided to focus on Jesus, each time, each day, each, each minute, he was being transformed. Till time passed by and you look up and you see a great father, a great mentor, a great youth pastor, a great son before you. Same thing with myself. The things that I have done in the past, I can't even fathom making some of those same decisions now. Why? Because I've begun to embrace who God has called me to be so that I can begin to reflect God. It's when you make a decision Lord, I'm not going to focus on what I got going on. I'm going to focus on you. Keep your eye on me. He says, acknowledge me in all your ways. Acknowledge me. Don't acknowledge what you got going on. Oh, Lord, I'm so stressed. I'm so unhappy. Don't acknowledge that. Oh my God, my dad, he just so, oh my God, he, he don't never do this and he don't be doing that and now he, don't focus on that. I mean, my mom, she always be running her mouth and she be doing this and she don't never understand and she, what kind of, she just, ugh, I wish I had a, don't focus on that. God said, focus on me. I know you got a lot going on around you. I know your situation seems a little despairing. I know it seems like you're going to be unhappy for a long time, but keep your focus on me because I can change all of that. You can see a difference in your situation. Just keep, keep your focus on me. When you acknowledge me in all your ways, I will direct your path. What does that directing look like? That looks like even when the path looks rocky, even when the path looks stressful, even when the path looks despairing, depressing, alone, whatever, hurtful, you feel like you've been uh, uh, lied on, you feel like whatever it is that you're going through, whatever that road looks like, he says, acknowledge me when you're going down that road. Acknowledge me in everything as you're going along that road. And I'll direct your path. So I'll direct you to let you know, okay, we're going to pick up our feet real high on this one. We high-stepping today because it's going to be a lot going on today. He'll direct your path. Okay, we're going we're gonna to turn left today because going right is going to put you in, in, in some boo-boo you don't want to deal with today. Acknowledge me in all of your ways and I will direct your path. Keep your focus on God. I think y'all got it. As we grow in our relationship with Christ, we should develop in the fruit of the Spirit, understanding that development is a byproduct of spending time with God. Let's read Romans 2 and 4, and then I'll go to my last point. Romans 2 and 4 says, Don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that His kindness is intended to turn you from your sin. Another version says, it's the goodness of God that brings a man to repentance. Focus on God. He says, don't you see? I'm, I'm trying to get you to focus on me, who is love, who is good. God is good. He like is good. He doesn't like just do good things. No, he is good. The very essence of who he is, is good. It's good. Whatever comes from him is good. Whatever moves he makes 
is good. And when you keep your eyes focused on him, he says, you'll be connected and you'll focus on my goodness so that you won't be paying so much attention to all of this other stuff. And see, the more you focus on my goodness, the good things that I've done, the good things that I'll continue to do, when you're focused on that, you're so focused on the good that you don't even realize that you're bypassing all of this other stuff. And then as a result, you're like, man, I just, I'm so grateful. All this good stuff is just happening. And Lord, I thank you. And you know what? You've just been so good to me on a consistent basis. I don't even want to do the things I used to no more. I don't want to smoke that no more. I'm tired of lying to my mom and my dad. I don't want to do that no more. I'm so focused on the goodness of God and how he continues to provide for me. And even when I mess up, I'm so focused on the goodness that he provides, the goodness that he continues to show up for me and my family, the good. When I'm focused on the good, the bad will be behind me before I know it. And because I've been so focused on him, I look up, I'm like, man, I don't even like to do the same things I was doing. Because the development is, is a byproduct of me staying focused on God. It's the goodness of God that brings a man to his knees, that brings him to repentance. It's you being able to see God continuing to show up because he's not going to stop being good, period. That's just who he is. He said, I'm going to do that because that's what I do. That's who I am. Oh, I'm going to be good, period. When you begin to see that, it, you have no choice but, man, God, I thank you, man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being good. Sometimes you just got to stop and remind yourself, you know what, God, you've been good. It's been a lot of stuff going on in my life, but you know what, you've still been good. Life be seeming stressful, and people around me be seeming real fake, but you know what? You've still been good. Even in the midst of me doing things that I shouldn't have, stuff that really should have had me jacked up and, and messed up, you've still been good. You've been keeping me. I'm still here. Yeah, I went through some stuff, but I'm still here, and I thank you for that. I'm not, I'm not in a hole somewhere. I thank you for keeping me. When you start to acknowledge that and you start to see that, I'm telling you, development is, is, is automatic. But God says, I want you to focus on getting to know me. Focus on the things that I like. Focus on the things that make me happy. Because I'm focused on you. In any relationship, think about a relationship a successful one. Or if you hadn't had one, think about why it wasn't successful. Because I guarantee you somewhere in there, somebody wasn't focusing in. Somebody was being self-centered. Somebody was not concerned about you when you felt like they should have been. And here God is, we be just as selfish as we want to be. Just as self-centered, just as thoughtless, you know what I'm saying? Only thinking about what we want, what we like, the things that make us feel good. And guess what he's doing? The same thing. He don't say, well, shoot, you ain't think about me, I ain't going to be thinking about you. That's not our God. Mm -mm. He says, I'm going to run you over with goodness until you see that it's me, and you be like, my guy. That's my guy. Let's, let's connect, because you've been, you been one good God. Let's connect. Let's get to know each other more. And he's like, victory. One for the win. That's all I wanted. I wanted to be able to be in connection with my child. I wanted my child to want me like I want them. To want to get to know me like I know the very number of hairs on your head. Girls, I don't care how much hair we add to it. He know the original count. He do. Guys, I don't care how much you cut it. You can go bald, it don't matter. He know the original count of the follicles. Because that's just how detailed he is with the people that he loves. He says, I just want you to desire me and long for me like that. 
And when we do that, you'll begin to see the change. Last point, and I kind of said it already, the more we get to know him, spend time in his word, we begin to reflect and look like him. And that's the same thing I said. The more you, the more you spend time with a person, you start talking alike. You ever been around somebody who's like from New York or something? Or, I don't know, what's another, another state that has a really thick accent? Louisiana? Yes. New Orleans definitely has that, that I ain't gonna even try because I ain't gonna have y'all laughing at me. But when you get around people like that and they start talking in their thick accent, you ever, you ever try to talk like them just because they talking like that? You know what I'm saying? When Anthony gets around his family, he's been in the South for like over 20 years, right? But all his family talk like this. Yo, what up, cuz? What up, what up, what up? So then he like, yo, what up? I'm like, first of all, you be saying shawty any other time. You get around your cousins and now all of a sudden it's like, yo, what up, cuz? Yo, cuz, ha, 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 ha. All of that. Why? Because when you get in the presence, when you get in the presence of people, you start to, you know what I'm saying, it starts to bleed over. You start to act like them people. Now, I'm saying it in the aspect of you spending time with God and you starting to talk like God and act like God. But keep in mind that when you're hanging around bad company, there is a scripture in the Bible that says evil communication corrupts good manners. I can kind of tell when you've been around wrong company. It kind of, ooh. It shows. Uh, you acting different. <laughs> I got one student in mind. Oh my gosh, he's so funny. He gets to acting, acting funny, talking funny, walking funny. What? Like, what? Why you acting different? It's like you just be trying it out like an outfit. No good and well, you walk upright. Now all of a sudden you want to walk like this. You know that ain't even how you walk. That ain't even how you do. That ain't you. But I'm encouraging you. Spend time with God. You don't have to focus on, oh, well, what is, what is um, looking like God and talking like God even look like? Don't worry about that. Just worry about getting to know him. All the other stuff, it'll make its way. It'll do what it needs to do. Just spend time thinking about him, getting to know him. All right. So these are just a couple of notes I have. Living by how you feel is like trying to survive on junk food. Living in your feelings is very unhealthy. It's like surviving on junk food. Anybody ever seen the, um, there's a documentary on, I think it's on Amazon, where someone ate McDonald's for like, I think it was like 60 days. They ate McDonald's straight, like nothing else but McDonald's. Do you know that person was like so sick and obese? Why? Because the body wasn't getting nourishment. He decided to feed his body a bunch of junk. Fries and burgers and quarter pounders and fish sandwiches and apple pies and milkshakes and I'm getting hungry. But he decided, you know what, I want to see what he does. And a lot of times that's how we be. We be like, you know what, I don't need this Bible stuff. This is for my mama now. I don't need this. Read my word, what? Pray. Wake up with the pastor Constance at 725 and do confessions, what? Why am I going to do that? I don't need that. No, mm-mm. Get somebody else to do it. No, I don't need that. But instead, scroll, let's see, oh, TikTok, TikTok, scroll, scroll, scroll. What's the latest trend? Oh, what are they doing now? What's the latest meme? Oh, let me do an encouraging meme. That'll be, that'll be my encouraging word for the day. I'm gonna get an encouraging meme. It's like junk food. Your spirit needs to be fed. The truth of God's word. So when you decide to live a healthy life, 
with God, it's like, you know what? No, I'm going to make time to do what I need to do. Because guess what? When you get sick, when you're not feeling well, guess what you're willing to do? You're willing to take all that money. Can I have some of that nasty medicine? I don't feel good. I don't feel good. My stomach hurt. My head hurt. My throat. My throat hurt. Can I have some of that nasty medicine? Yeah, you're willing to do what you need to then. Because see, the emotional part of this journey, when you're full of all of it, it can feel exciting. Always something dramatic or something petty or something, something for you to be into that's got your emotions like on this roller coaster, right? It gets you real excited or real angry or really anxious, really stressed. That's when you're living in your emotional life. But see, that, that don't sustain you but for so long. Pretty soon you get drained. You feel tired. You see people who, who always feel like super out of it or they, they, they like unhappy. Life is just not good at all, ever. No, I'm over this. This is for the birds. I'm like, like why? Why? This life, why? Over it. I'm over it. I'm over y'all. I'm just over it. I don't even want to be here. Those kind of people. Living in their emotions. The emotions are, are, are not sustaining. Your emotions give you jolts. You know what I'm saying? Like junk food. Give you like a boost of sugar, your boost of energy, then you crash. You know what I'm saying? You eat a whole bunch of Skittles and now ladies and you be like... <laughs> then like 20, 30 minutes later, you be like, man, I need to get somewhere to sit down. Sleepy. Crash. That's what it's like living in your emotions. But when you invest in a relationship with God, the word will sustain you like a well-balanced diet. It will sustain you so that when you're feeling these different emotional experiences, going back to my first point, the word will anchor you so you don't get drained and all of that. Yes, you'll experience some of your emotions, but you're not going to live in it. You're not going to stay there. It'll anchor you back, okay, come back, back down, back down there. Let's come back down to the truth. We're not going to live in our emotions today. So that you won't drain yourself and depress yourself and overwhelm yourself dwelling in your emotions. All right? Uh, I had Psalms 119, 165. Let me get that. I think that was my last scripture. Psalms 119. Those who love your instruction have great peace and do not stumble. Those who love your instruction have great peace and do not stumble. Those who love being able to go into the word and see the truth of God's word concerning their lives, they have great peace and they don't stumble. Because the truth of what God says is what, it's what simmers our spirit, our souls. The truth of what, whatever I'm experiencing, when I get the truth of the matter, that's what's going to calm me down. That's what's going to make me fall back. Like, you know what? I'm good. I'm straight. It's all good because I know in the end, I know the truth of God's word concerning it. Oh, it looked like this. It looked like I don't have nobody. But the truth of the matter is God said he'll never leave me. I'm never alone. Period. The more you feed on God's word and get full of it, the more peace you will have. And it will act as a shield against the attacks of the enemy. That's what I've been saying the whole time. God's word acts as a, a counter, a protectant, so that you're not dwelling on what you see. You're dwelling more on what you know the truth is. And until you see God's goodness in whatever that situation is, it's not over. Continue to remind yourself of God's promise. Listen, young people, it is your responsibility to make time to spend with God and study his word. God won't make you include him. He's not going to make you. He's not going to make you. So you come in, you come into church, and you're like, yeah, okay, I came to team ministry. But guess what? Your relationship goes outside of team ministry. 
it goes outside of team ministry. What kind of relationship is just good if you just, oh, you just gonna talk to me behind closed doors. You ain't gonna talk to me, you know what I'm saying? Like we not, oh, you not trying to say nothing in front of your friends or nothing. We not that type. We not the type where you can post me on social media, oh, we not that. That ain't, the, that ain't the type of relationship we got. You just want to keep me under wraps. He said, I'm not going to make you do that. Mm-mm. That's on you to do. That's on you to decide how this relationship is going to be. How tight we going to be. That's on you. You decide that. Okay? Spending time with him gives you a different point of view. His perspective causes him... His perspective causes him to respond with grace, love, and forgiveness. Immerse yourself in his word, and you will begin to cultivate peace and walk in love. I want you to ask yourself this question, guys, as I close. Ask yourself this question. How long have you been born again? Matter of fact, I just want to know. Somebody throw, how long you been born again? Eight years? Okay. Ten? All right, 11, all right. Anybody else know how long they've been born again? Nine, nine years, huh? Elementary school, so that's about the same. Okay, all right. So think about this. If you had a relationship since elementary school, wouldn't you wanna be tight by the time you got in high school? You like, by now we should be like tight, tight. Like this. I've been with you since elementary school. We've been cool since elementary school. We should be like this. Finishing each other's sentences. Acting alike. People should think we family at this point. It's been that long. We should be dressing alike sometimes. Or is that uncool? Is that uncool? Dressing alike? My point is, after, after, a, a period of time, your relationship should evolve. Stop chumping God off like he just get the bare minimum. Don't be in a relationship and then starve it. You want all your other relationships in your life to thrive and to grow and to evolve. Guys, you could be with a girl and, and you, want, you want stuff to, to progress within months, weeks even. And vice versa. Girls, if you got a boyfriend and y'all been together for like six months, you like, oh, we love each other for real, for real. Like this is, this is serious. But you've been together for eight years though? Eight years, 11 years, 10 years. And this is not to bash you, it's just to locate yourself. I've been in a relationship for this long and it's not evolving. We're not growing together. I've been with my husband 18 years. Well, we've been married for 18. I've been with them longer than that. My love for him grows through the years. How does it grow? We done been through so much stuff. We done, that's another time maybe for another season in your life after high school. We've been through so much. But what makes us love each other more is that even through the mess, we keep showing up for each other. We keep showing up. He don't leave me hanging. Yeah, we almost called it quits a few times. But he keeps showing up. We might have to go in the other room and just be quiet for a little bit. But we're going to keep showing up. And for that, I love him. Think about it. Your relationship with God. You ain't really been feeding him like you should. You ain't been spending time with him like you should. But get what? He keeps showing up. Coming through clutch. Think about all of the different things you've been through since elementary school. Some of them you'd be like, oh my gosh, that was just too much.
But guess what? You still here because he keeps showing up. I love him for that. Begin to like evaluate. This high school. It's time to start taking taking who you spend your time with seriously. Evaluate what you what you're investing in. Don't make God this magicianal type thing where you know what when I really need him I'm on robo sheke amba baba siti amba. Lord, I thank you. Oh, you ain't did nothing yet. See, that's what I'm talking about. I don't even, I don't even believe in God like that. You ain't, even, you ain't even connected to him. like You ain't even been spending enough time with him like that, for real. How are you going to say you don't believe in him? I want you to evaluate that. It's time for y'all to grow up. Grow up in your relationship with God. Stop walking around empty, but expecting so many amazing, great things to come from God. He gonna keep showing up. But I guarantee you, the more you connect and invest with him, the greater things that you'll see. Why? Because I can trust him to do those great things. It ain't like he don't want to. It ain't like they ain't sitting up, chilling, waiting for you. All of the blessings that God has promised are, are like stored up waiting for you. To what? To understand who he is and be able to operate the way you need to so you can connect and walk in the ways that will lead you directly to your good, your great uh, storehouse, if you will. There's so many things that he can do for you. Don't settle for just the bare minimum. Oh, he woke me up this morning, you know. I have food in the cabinet. At this point, y'all take that stuff for granted. There's so many other great things God wants to do for you. He wants you to see. But it's when you connect in that relationship with him that you can really hear what he has to say so you can do what he has you to do so you can see what he has for you. Does that make sense? All right, I want everyone to stand up on your feet. Y'all, thank you. We are done. Stand up. <clears throat> I want you to declare something with me. And then after that, it will be a wrap. Did y'all learn something today? Let's get, um, before we declare this, let me get a, thank you, Janae. Let me get a microphone. I just need three people. And if you're online watching, I, I'll take yours too. I need three people to tell me something that they're taking away from what, what we discussed today. Three people to tell me what they're taking away. All right, Carson, we got, Carson? We got one up here. Did you have somebody in the back? Yeah, I, I have somebody who wants to say something right here. She's up here. Put your hand back up. He can't see you, Chad. Um, one thing I took away today was that we can be like best friends with God. So the closer I am with God, the farther I am from all the mess. And I can kind of find his message in the mess. I like that. I like that. Thank you. Anyone else? I got another one in the middle, Ramik. I got two, actually. Ramik making his way over, Sanaya, right here. He behind you in the red hoodie. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Okay, so this week and for the rest of my life, I want to put God first. And I like the analogy that you made with you asked how long we've been saved for, and I've been saved for a really long time. So, you know, at this point in my life, I should be like really tight with God. And um, when you read one of the Bible verses talking about God's love and kindness, and how I thought how we can kind of take it for granted because he's always there for us. So that's two takeaways that I got from the message. Um. 
Oh, I'm like, I heard it. <laughs> okay, one takeaway, one really big takeaway for me today was the analogy of the McDonald's and the Skittles and how you end up feeling super sick and you end up crashing. I never thought about that with concerning my relationship with God, but that is honestly the truth because I felt it time and time again and I've been wondering like, what's going on? Where is God? And it's just a matter of me reaching out and connecting with the word and developing that crucial relationship. So I'm definitely gonna be thinking about that this week. Good stuff. Uh, one thing I learned was that you really have to put initiative into getting into a relationship with God. Uh, I, can't, I can barely hear you. Put the mic up just a little bit more. Okay. You gotta put initiative into getting into your relationship with God and put an effort towards it because he wants it more than everything, but he wants you to want it more than everything. Yes. At the same time. That part. He wants you to want it. He wants you to want it. And I like what you said um, tonight that we take for granted his goodness because it's, he gonna be good. He can't do nothing but be good. I know the world be trying to put all types of stuff on him. Oh, God did this. Oh, he did this. He did this. Oh, God did it because I just don't understand why God would do that. No, God is good. Everything that comes from him is good. Everything he produces is good. He is love. Everything that comes from him is love. When you see something good, God did it. That's God. But sometimes we take that for granted. We take for granted that we get to open our eyes and wake up every morning. We take for granted that we get to have a home, apartment, townhouse, whatever you sleep in. You take for granted that you have that because it's just there. But he wants you to start wanting to acknowledge him, wanting to include him, wanting to connect. Let's be best buds. All right, y'all declare this with me. Say, Lord, a declaration. No, 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 no. Uh, pause. A declaration is when you're, when you're speaking something, you are like setting this in motion. All right? So when you're setting something in motion, when you're establishing something with a declaration, it don't sound like this. Lord, I just declare. This is what I declare. That ain't no declaration. When you declare something, when you're setting something in motion, you speak up. You speak out. So, let's declare this. Lord, I'm not going to live my life on empty, help me to fill up on your word, to understand your ways and be an expression of you to this world. In Jesus' name, amen. That is all that I have, guys. Thank you for your time. I pray that you understood what I said, that you heard what I said, and you're able to grow from it. Take time this week to go back and replay it. Um, we've got, when y'all get out for, for uh, the holiday break? This week, the last week? This week, last week, okay. So do this for me. This week is the last week, guys. I'm getting on live at 725. Get your behinds up. Log on to the doggone Instagram and confess with me. Get, I'm saying the doggone confessions. All you got to do is get on, wake your behind up, open your mouth, and make the confessions that's supposed to help you have a good day. How I'm getting up to help encourage you to have a good day, and you won't even get up to help you have a good day. I'm on my mama swag right now, so that was a little spanking. Get your butts up and, and confess over your lives.
take responsibility for your lives. You can't have everything done for you. You got to do something. Amen? Let the church say amen. Oh, y'all ain't going to say amen to that? You know what? You know what? I could get a belt. I, I'm just playing. I, I will not get a belt. Just meet me in the back. No, seriously, I'm encouraging you guys. This is the last week before the break. We're declaring the goodness of God over our day every morning, five minutes. I encourage you for five minutes. We confess for five minutes. We're out of that guy. I'd like for someone to join me this week, so you can holler at me. I'm not going to put you on blast, and I'm not going mm -mm, to do that, because at the end of the day, I'll get up and do it myself, because guess what? I'm going to declare the word, because that's what I do. Whether you choose to do it and speak it over your life, that's on you. Y'all high school, whether you want to declare using your authority and declare that you're going to have a good day and all of that, I just made it easier for you by putting the confessions together and then giving you a platform to say it on. Whether you choose to do it or not, I'm going to do it because there are students who get on. I just know we got way more than that be on there. Anyhow. That's my little spanking for the day. I love y'all. If you're in here and you are not born again, you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, everything that we do, all that we do, this whole service is to create these type of moments, to make sure that at the end of the day, we're all in the same place. We love God and we receive his goodness. So if you are in here and you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's very simple. He made it very easy. He says, if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he died for your sins, you will be saved. So if you have not done that, if you're watching, you have not made Jesus Christ the Lord over your life, I want you to repeat this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I acknowledge that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask you, to come into my heart, be my Lord, be my Savior, be my God. Make me more like you so that I may be a reflection of you in this earth. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that simple prayer, that's all it takes. You are now born again. Once you become born again, that's step one. Step two is you have to now renew your mind because you be still thinking crazy, doing, trying to do crazy stuff. So to begin the process of renewing your mind, you will now need to begin being disciple. You know what I'm saying? You get to know him. Like I was talking about today, you begin, this is your, this is day one of your relationship. So, you know what I'm saying? This is you. This is the introduction. Y'all getting to know each other and you will build from here. But uh, we have a special gift for you to help you along that journey. So if you just said that prayer, you can text I'm saved to 51555. And we have a special gift for you to get. All right. Um, that's all that I have. Um, the production team is going to come. I want to say uh, tomorrow, y'all make sure y'all show my husband some love because he love y'all. So y'all make sure y'all love my husband tomorrow. Okay. That is all I have, and um, we will see y'all next week. It's Christmas party next week, so y'all enjoy. We made it for y'all. I love y'all. I'll holla at y'all. Come on, production team. All right. Y'all not right. dismissed yet. Production team. team. Production, I mean, sorry. Everyone, please stay in your seat. Stay in your seat. Sit. You guys can sit down, by the way. You guys sit down. You guys can sit down. Come on, production team. Y'all come up right quick. Yeah, y'all can come too. Mackenzie, Greg, y'all can come too. Hey. Hey. Hi, live stream. Oh. <laughs> so, for those who do not know, um, Monday is our very own Pastor Ant's birthday. Okay, let's give it up for him right quick. Woo. It's going to be the big 4 1. And so, the production, but on behalf of the production team, and if you guys in the audience want to join in, we're just going to sing happy birthday to Pastor Ant. Right quick. So on the count of three, we're going to say happy birthday, okay? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pastor Anthony. Anthony. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Woo! Pastor Ann, we hope you enjoy your day. We thank you for the impact that you have made on each and every one of our lives, individually and collectively. Um, we just thank you for what you've done for us, and we just wanted to tell you happy birthday. So we have a quick little video for you, and we hope you enjoy. Guys, today is a very special day. We are celebrating your youth pastor, my husband's birthday. I had to gather just a few people because team ministry is life for us. So here's a few people that have been impacted along this journey. Jeez, I have a bunch of memories that, that you've given me and just a lot of tips that have helped me in the real world. Um, so I just, honestly, I just want to say thank you. You played a really big role in my life. So I appreciate you. Thank you. And happy birthday. Hello, Pastor Ann. I just want to give it up one more time for Pastor Ann. Happy, 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 happy birthday. Okay, from the production team and everyone here, we want to wish you the best birthday. Happy 41 birthday, Pastor Ann. All right, see you live stream. Thank you for joining us today. What is up, WCRE? It's Rikinti here, and I'm getting 